Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Grow Wealthy Grooming. If you don't know who I am, that's okay. My name is River Lee, and I am the founder of The Savvy Groomer, where I teach pet groomers how to go from being burnt out, broken, broken, to healthy, wealthy, and happy, building a grooming business on your terms. Um, there's so many fun ways to get involved with us with the Savvy Pet Professionals free Facebook group, um, private one-on-one -on -one coaching, our, all of our master classes. And in fact, this week, we are sponsored by the Pay Masterclass, which is actually going to be taught starting this week, or I should say next week, rather. So next Tuesday, we're going to be starting the Pay Masterclass. This is a six-module masterclass where we teach you how to calculate payroll and profit for pet grooming business employees. Remember, 50% is bullshit. We're going to teach you how to get control of your payroll, okay? And again, if you're interested, you can just find it at SavvyGroomer.com slash PGMC. There's two ways to join. You can either join our self-studying and immediately get a month free at our 850. And again, that is 350 every month if you become a member. Or you can pay as self-study as a non-member, and that is just a one-time fee. So I highly suggest you go and check that out. So let's go ahead and talk about today. Today is our virtual Q&A happy hour. Whoop, whoop. So this means you guys get to ask any questions that you want the answers to. I just have a vodka soda, but hopefully you guys are all winding down or enjoying your time. So let's go ahead and get started with these questions. So. Um, we do have a question that we have pulled from our Facebook group. So this was a person that had, they were doing something wrong. I have a doodle puppies that come in and the bigger they get, of course, prices go up. I do let the owners know that the prices do increase when the puppy gets bigger. As soon as they are getting into, I just need to be able to read this. Up into the $100 range, they are canceling saying I'm too expensive. Have any of you guys dealt with this? How do you handle this? I've had three doodles cancel this week on me because they are saying that I went up my prices and now I'm too expensive. One of the dogs has doubled and tripled in size from when I started grooming them. I'm at the point where I don't even want to take large dog doodle puppy owners because they all cancel on me and think I'm expensive. We know this though, right? And generally speaking, first thing we want to ask yourself, is this someone who's a soulmate client to begin with? They're generally not, unfortunately, doodle owners want to be, but for the most part, they're not going to stay at a four-week schedule and they're not generally willing to do the work, right? So, and I'm not saying all of them. There's definitely people, um, I've worked with the Doodle Pro and I think that her people are wonderful, but a lot of doodle owners just are not prepared for the level of care. So what I would actually suggest to this person is that they charge the adult price or the assumed adult price. Now, I personally think that there's no reason to have a lower price for a puppy. I don't, because the amount of time that you will spend with the adult coat, I'm investing in basically teaching this puppy. I don't suggest you teach adults how to be appropriate on the table. Uh, I think they were not dog trainers, but with puppies, we do have to have more time, care, and attention. It just takes more time. We have to be more flexible. We have to be more nurturing with them. It's just part of that, right? So if I'm charging them for that, I'm teaching their large dog, right, how to be appropriate on the table. What's happening right now is that you are teaching these dogs how to be good on the table, and then they're going to go somewhere cheap, right? And they're going to go, wow, this doodle is really well behaved. It's because of all the hard work that you did. Now here at the Savvy Groomer, we teach you the GPS or the Savvy Groomer point system. And again, the way that basically works is one point is one unit of effort. So a Chihuahua bath, brush, nails, ears is one point. A Shih Tzu bath, brush, nails, ears, and a five strip would be about two points, one point for the bath and one point for the haircut. Most doodles are going to be a minimum of four points and a max of 10. So a really easy way of doing that is quoting them. You know, if they are a large breed doodle, let's say they are, you know, a labradoodle or a golden doodle. I'm going to assume that their dog's going to be between six and eight points, right? So I'm going to price them based on three to four Shih Tzu's worth of effort from the very beginning. And they might be like, that's not fair. It's a puppy. Be like, that's fine. Go somewhere else. 
right? And then if you want to come back, come back. If they're not willing to pay the price when they're a puppy, what makes us think that they're going to be willing to pay the price when they're an adult, right? It's not going to happen, unfortunately. So I would love to see you guys do that. And Ruth said, exactly, right? I'm sick of high hard work, not appropriate what I do for their pet. They're not, they're not appreciating you, unfortunately. They're really not. And it's really not fair because, you know, I know Ruth, Ruth has been a student of mine. She is so caring and so wonderful to her clients. And a lot of them don't appreciate her. Um, and some of that is going to be, they're going to have to go somewhere else. But again, making sure that they're willing to pay the price up front. And that sucks, right? That really sucks that people should just do the right thing. But sometimes you have to put their money where their mouth is to show that they are actually ready to invest in this long-term care. Um, and I feel really bad with not just one, but three times you've had, you put all this love, care, and attention into this little puppy, right? All of this, you know, teaching and nurturing. And instead of them being like, wow, Ruth, thank you so much. You know, we have this lifelong partnership with this puppy. Instead, they're like, hey, thanks for all your hard work. We're going somewhere else cheaper. Um, we used to have this problem too, because we used to focus on uh, pets with skin issues. Um, or we used to have things like, um, you know, pets that had behavioral issues, and then we would work on it. Liz says, I have a puppy agreement contract that everyone is required to sign, which states that the price continues to rise as the puppy grows. So far, it's been successful. So here's the thing too, right? It does depend upon what you want. I personally, and everyone's different, as a business coach, even though it takes less time, it takes more skill to successfully groom a puppy. I cannot hand a baby groomer a 12-week-old doodle puppy and it's not going to look jacked up because that thing is wiggly. It is dangerous, right? I don't see, and again, I'm all about simplifying your business. What benefit is it to me to train your puppy to be appropriately to be groomed? Because again, most of the grooming industry will tell you it's your responsibility as a groomer to train that puppy, but it's actually the owner's responsibility for their puppy to be trained on how to be appropriate in the grooming salon. It's not my responsibility. That said, if it is going to be my job, I need to be paid for my job. So that's where I don't suggest it. When we groomed cats, we did not charge less for kittens. Kittens are not easier to groom than full grown cats. Puppies are not easier to groom than full grown adult dogs. They're just not. So, you know, a lot of the reasons people bring them in is that way they get used to it. But again, that should be expected. A lot of times we are trying to do things like we're like, oh, well, if I don't make it cheaper, they're not going to come till they're a year old. Well, someone who's choosing to go for till a year, they're choosing to make a bad choice. And you always have the right to say no. And I wouldn't, I would never, ever, ever, ever again, unless if it was in a membership, do a dog who has not been consistently groomed, right? I would never do it around a year old because again, that's the second fear imprint period. I have a dog who is probably matted, is terrified, is probably not very social, right? I would just tell them, no, go to Petco because Petco's got to kick them out and they're going to call you back, Right. And sometimes this was going to happen, but I don't think all your hard work should go, um, you know, without any help. So I hope that helps. After maternity, I will be changing my work hours to essentially after hours. When my husband comes home, I don't own the business. When should I tell clients during maternity before, right before I come back? So if you don't own the business, so I'm assuming you're an employee, if you don't own the business, it's actually not up to you to communicate that to clients. That should be your businesses. You know, the business owner should be communicating that. Um, also, you need to be very clear on the expectations. So as an employee, if you're going to be working after hours, um, what other responsibilities or liabilities are you going to have? Are you going to be checking in and out of the clients? Are you going to be expected to collect all the money and do a cash drawer? Um, are there going to be cameras on you? You know, is there anything you're going to be doing for safety if you're grooming after hours? Um, because again, if you're a woman alone, I'm not saying that women can't defend themselves, 
Um, but there are just things that we are more vulnerable to that, you know, don't generally happen to men. Um, how are you going, how, what is the business going to be doing to make sure that you're safe? Are you going to be locking the door in between clients or doing everyone start to finish? Um, but if you are, you know, going to go rogue and you're going to just do it anyway, and you're going to basically treat it like it's your business, which a lot of you guys do, unfortunately, a lot of grooming businesses basically make you your own employer. You know, they don't give you any direction. They don't give you an SOP manual. They kind of like go, ah, eh, whatever, just run your own business, basically in my business. Um, if they are going to do that for you, right. And then I would do it beforehand because again, you, these people need to reschedule and you may lose clients. Some clients that would not work for like me personally, I would never want a service that's after hours. Um, I barely, I love you all. It's seven o'clock at night. I'm getting tired. I like starting winding down my day at about 2 PM. I get up at five. I wind my day down at two and I might do things very rarely um, for my one-on-one -on -one coaching clients. I do them on Thursday nights late, but I would much rather have a 5 a.m. call than a 5 p.m. call. So you might lose some people. Some people might be like, you know what? This doesn't work for me, right? There might be more commuting hours and things like that. So I would let them know now and that way they can plan and they can schedule. And if you do need to hire, I'm sorry, not hire. I'm looking at my cat. He's being, please don't knock everything over. He is... Just being fire. It's fine. Um, you know, it's really important that you start communicating all of that, right? You want to start communicating that. You want to start letting them know and creating that schedule. Um, because again, if, if that doesn't work and also, you know, just let them know, like, these are my assumed times back, but I can't guarantee it because I'm just, you know, when you're going to have your baby, right? And I would take, if you can, at least, you know, two, if not three months off, um, and you can always, what you can do, and I highly suggest this if your family has history of C-sections and things like that, to go ahead and assume a C-section, put everybody in and say, listen, my plan is to be back no later than this. And then have a call, have a call list and say, you know, but if I come back sooner, I will book everyone. And it is so much easier to bring in everyone four weeks earlier. And everyone's so grateful to have you back versus somebody else than it is to have to push everyone back. And it's going to create a lot of tension for you and the baby. It's so much easier to be like, yeah, you know what? I expected to have 12 weeks off. I'm really good. I only needed eight. And you start calling people or you want to start in slowly. That really gives you a much better situation there. So I hope that helps a lot. Um, so Candace asked, how would you price a puppy? Double. So this really depends. So I, it, it depends on a lot of things. So, and again, we teach a point system. We don't teach an hourly rate. We want it based on effort. Um, so it depends on a lot of things, right? Um, a consultation groom is a great way to start. And again, our consultation groom is based on our worst case scenario. Um, there are new clients. We don't know what we're going to get. So we have our consultation groom. Um, and then you get to determine what's going on with that puppy. Every puppy is so different. Um, you know, back when I was breeding and showing, it's really hard to know. And you could have, you know, we literally would have a litter of 12 puppies and we'd have like two or three that were kind of similar, but the rest of them were not super similar. One second. Someone's being very naughty. So this is where, again, you have to see how much time, care, and attention. So when you do your initial consultation groom, you find out what's going on with that puppy. Is that puppy screaming and terrified? Or did their breeder do a great job and that puppy is great for touching their feet? You know, is that puppy ready for all of these things? Where is that puppy at? I have friends that breed and show standard poodles and their puppies are so ready for these things, right? They're so ready for being grooming and they're fine. And then I can't tell you how many schnauzer puppies I have groomed in my life. See? Take a sip, take a big swip of vodka that were screaming, thrashing messes. And it's like you just looked at the dog and it starts screaming. You know, they were just not well bred. We had a lot of puppy mail. They always like Merle, you know, schnauzer puppies that just were not well bred and they were not handled or they were not handled kindly. Right. 
So again, how much time care attention does that dog take? How many points is it? If a normal, you know, let's say schnauzer is two to three points, then I may make that puppy three to five points. It depends on how cooperative that dog is. It depends on how much time it takes, depends on how much effort it takes. You know, I might be able to do a puppy in 45 minutes to an hour, but it was a really stressful 45 minutes to an hour. Um, and again, that's not the puppy's fault, but it's part of the deal, right? I didn't make you a puppy. Your owner decided to buy a puppy. Your owner did not buy you from a awesome show breeder who that dog has been bathed and blow dried and handled its entire life. They chose to, you know, insert whatever thing, get it from a pet store, buy it online, you know, whatever, you know, they chose that puppy. I didn't choose that puppy. I'm happy to help them, but I need to get paid for it. So I hope that helps. Hey, Mindy, great to see you here live. I love it. Love to see you guys here. That cat, give me one second. Speaking of things being naughty, right? Oh my goodness, so crazy. Uh, so we have a Facebook user who said, How, can you help me determine my hourly rate? So the Savvy Groomer doesn't really teach an hourly rate and I'll very quickly explain it why. We actually teach this really in depth in the pricing and points class. Um, we just taught that in the group mentorship. Anyone who's in the group mentorship or the Savvy Groomer membership, you have access to the brand new pricing and points um, until the end of June. So you're going to have access to that. Um, and you can watch it's about an hour and a half long. And so the reason that we don't suggest points, I'm sorry, but the reason we don't suggest hourly is because unfortunately with an hourly rate, there's so many variables. So, you know, what I'm talking about an hourly rate, okay, I have to explain to myself, okay, did this take an hour because there weren't as many phone calls? Did this take an hour because I've invested in more expensive things? Like I bought myself a bathing system. I bought myself a K93 instead of having a lower blow dryer. I've invested in higher quality shampoos and conditioners um, and maybe some finishing sprays that really helps dry the dogs faster. Did I invest in better scissor clippers and insert thing, right? Um, did I invest in like a clipper vac and now I don't have to back brush? You know, did I invest all that money into things and now it just takes me less time and then I'm going to make less money? That doesn't make any sense. Um, and or, right, am I doing this in an hour because I've been grooming for 20 years, right? And now I can get this dog done in an hour where if I were to hire a new groomer or teach a new groomer, it's going to take them a solid two or three hours, right? So hourly isn't awesome. The only way hourly works is if you never upgrade anything, if you never get better, <laughs> Because again, if I get better and I get faster, I'm losing money somehow. And if you're never going to hire anyone, because if you hire somebody, if someone takes 45 minutes to do the dog and someone takes an hour and a half, how do you price that dog? Who's, who's right? Do you just split the difference? You know, what is it? And again, you know, there's, I use the Cocker example. If you have two groomers, one loves grooming Cocker Spaniels and has, you know, grown up breeding and showing them their Cocker Spaniels are going to be a lot faster than mine. I don't dislike Cocker Spaniels, but they're not my favorite dog. I mean, I'm kind of expecting you to poop on my table or pee somewhere. Um, I'm expecting something, right? And so for me, I might go a little slower. I might be more careful because I'm kind of expecting you to have explosive diarrhea from stress and I'm trying not to stress you out. So I'm going to take my time, right? So whose time is right? Would it be the person who got the dog done, let's say an hour and 15 minutes or me who took an hour and 45 minutes because again, I wanted to go slow because I was afraid if I went fast, this dog is going to have diarrhea all over me. And that's why I don't like hourly because now if you have a power groomer who can do 10 dogs in eight hours, and a, what I consider a regular groomer doing five to six dogs in eight hours. How do you figure out the hourly rate? You could say, oh, well, this person is a lower hourly rate. Okay. Well, if you're swapping the dogs back and forth, which every dog should be able to be groomed by every person in the salon, how is that going to work out? So I actually teach a point system and the point system is based on hourly, um, the amount of dogs you can get done in an hour, but it's a range, right? 
And then that person, the employees are paid by the hour and their hourly rate is based upon the point production that they create. Um, again, it sounds a little crazy, um, but it works really, really, really well. And it actually creates a great way too when you have employees, right? Because again, if I pay my groomer hourly, they're like, oh, they're going to milk the clock. But if they are expected to create a certain point production per day, they can't milk the clock. They have to do a certain amount of points per day or they get demoted or they get fired. And then even then, I teach that once they're a groomer and they have their points, they would also get quarterly production bonuses. So we do in the Price Increase Masterclass talk more about how to create um, your pricing, obviously we walk through how much you've invested, we're going to invest in the future. But again, a lot of times we don't consider how much money we've invested in our education, our tools, our products, right? Because again, it, it's not fair that if I use crappy products and I don't ever upgrade my things, I can charge someone more and I have less experience. I can charge someone more money because it's going to take me longer where the better I get, the more I invest and the better quality products I use to get a better, faster groom, I'm going to make less money. And also, I'll tell you what, as a consumer, I hate hourly pricing. There's nothing worse than going to a mechanic and having that mechanic say, yeah, it's going to take two to three hours. And I'm like, I want it next to two. I want it closer to two. I want them to get it done as fast as they humanly can. I don't want to keep paying more money for them to keep working on it. And it's one thing if it's a mechanical thing that doesn't have thoughts and feelings. The last thing I want the client to have to put pressure on me to finish as a groom. We have a wiggly body with a heart and a soul and sharp objects. I don't want the client to pressure me to get this done faster because I want to take the amount of time that I think is appropriate for that pet. I am the, you know, I'm the professional, you know, I'm in front of this pet. I want to take the amount of time this pet requires, you know, and if this pet takes an extra 30 minutes today because he's having a bad day, the client never feels good when you say that, right? It feels good when you say, listen, you know, we normally take it about an hour. Today was an hour and a half, you know, and, you know, as always, this is the scope of work and this is the price point it cost. That feels good. But if I say to you, hey, it took us 50% longer because he was having a bad day. So your price is 50% more. That doesn't feel good. It doesn't, I don't know in that moment if you're screwing me or if you honestly care about my pet. I also want to point out that the same people who will say, I'm going to charge my client hourly and they're going to like it also are the same people that generally will tell me that they don't want to pay their groomers hourly because their groomers are going to milk the clock. And it's funny because they're like, oh, my groomers would milk the clock if they were hourly, but I'm going to charge hourly and I would never milk the clock. You can't have it both ways. So that's where we really suggest doing your point system. We teach more about the pricing and point system, um, you know, in the, in the workshop called pricing and points. And then we also teach how to actually create your pricing in the Price Increase Masterclass. It's a great class. We've literally had over 100 people go through it. I've never heard anyone who didn't enjoy it. And obviously, if you didn't, let me know and how we can make it better. You know, it's all about what you want to do in your business. But there's so much involved. Um, no one can give you how much you should charge. You're going to have to do a little bit of legwork. Um, and we can always do that on a one-on-one -on -one coaching call. I have had students that go through the price increase masterclass, and then they spend one to three hours together and where we go through their specific soulmate client, their long-term plans in their business. And we can kind of figure out, okay, where can we simplify your money? Where can we figure all of this out? So there's a lot. I mean, I hate to say it this way, guys, but we literally spent six hours in the price increase masterclass. We spent six hours teaching that class. If I could teach it in like five minutes, I would have. I would have made a lot more money, unfortunately. All right, let's keep going. <laughs> Tara said, would you share tips with a student in a mentorship program? I have two, uh, I have a student two days a week, four hours a day from a local high school tech school. 
Um, so tips are kind of a, a, a really big gray area. So my personal feelings is that if they are a student, I think it's a little inappropriate to give them tips. However, if you do, um, I would I would probably give it to them more so in in food and things like that. Um, I think about, you know, it's really tough because like, all right, so when I was learning to groom, there's a big difference between somebody is doing things 100% by themselves and all that. But the truth is that if you have somebody in a mentorship program, they're learning, you know, if you, if you are working in any kind of student capacity, you're not going to get tips. Um, and honestly, I would rather see you give that person some money towards food, maybe like a gas card and buy things like that. But when you start handing somebody money, it becomes a little weird. It really changes the dynamic. Um, I personally feel like, you know, my mom's a teacher. She teaches sixth, seventh and eighth grade English. And I think about her handing a student money. Like if they were to, they, they work at, um, they have like a little student store, and there's like, you know, they sell bubble gum and candy and things like that. Like the idea of like they tipped them that like my mom would be giving the students money. Um, yes, questions are allowed. You're more than welcome to post a question and we are happy to answer it during the monthly virtual coffee. Well, I should say virtual happy hour. We will be answering questions live about your pet grooming business. Um, so, yeah, I just think I think it's a weird I think a teacher giving a student money is always a really weird, tricky place. Um, that's totally different than if you have an employee that you're teaching. But if they're a student in a mentorship program at a high school or tech school, um, I think it's more appropriate to be like, hey, I decided to buy us lunch today. Do you like pepperoni or whatever for that? Um, you know, anything like that. So it's all about how you would be able to go ahead and figure that in. I don't think it's appropriate to have um, professors or teachers give students money. I think it's a, I think it's a weird boundary set situation. So that's totally up to you. Um, but I, I wouldn't. I personally would not hand, especially not somebody in high school or tech school, um, if you did want to hold on to the tips, one thing you could do if you wanted the student to continue with you through the summer could be setting that money aside. And at the end of your teacher um, relationship, you could always say, hey, I just want to let you know, not tell them it's happening, but at the very end say, hey, thank you so much for the last X amount of weeks. You're, you've been a great kid. You've done really well. Um, I saved what would have been your tips if you had worked for me. And hand it to them and it's like a big fat stack. And I'd be like, oh, if you're interested in having a summer job, let me know. That is another way you could do it. But I, I wouldn't, while you are in a teacher-student relationship, I don't think money should change hands. I think that's really inappropriate. And Tara said, agree. Thank you. I'm so glad. Super happy that I can help you. Um, so we actually had a student in one of our Facebook groups ask about affiliate marketing. Has anyone done affiliate marketing with other businesses? If so, what did you do, end up doing with them? So for those of you guys that don't know, the Savvy Groomer will be announcing an affiliate program. So if you have been a student of ours, um, there's two different people, people that are non-members of our Savvy Groomer membership that have taken one of our master classes and has been a student. Um, and then obviously there's going to be a higher percentage for those that are currently members. But we're going to be having a affiliate program where you guys are going to be able to tell other groomers all about our classes and our things. You're actually going to be able to get paid for suggesting because we really appreciate you guys that post, you know, the sales pages um, to the price increase masterclass, to the pay masterclass, to the manage masterclass, you know, the membership masterclass. Like, thank you guys. We appreciate it so much. And we want to be able for you guys to be able to get money for that. So, I think that's a really important thing to do is to honor and appreciate you guys. Um, as far as with other businesses, I always say, make sure it's a business that you have used, that you trust. Um, you know, we have not personally with Savvy Groomer done an affiliate 
but we wouldn't be opposed to it. Like if we found a software company that we really felt a kinship to, um, if we really felt connected to a product or a service, um, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. But I do think that um, it's often used and abused. I think we see that a lot in the online world. Like a lot of these like 10X, blah, 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 make all this money kind of thing. And a lot of it is just the, the people confuse social proof with affiliate marketing. So I tend to kind of stay away from that kind of stuff. All right. So we have another question. And the question is, if your every four week client, doodle client, are about 130 to 150, what are you going to charge for a consultation group? So for those of you guys that are not sure what a consultation groom is, a consultation groom is essentially um, the first time someone comes to you or someone hasn't come to you in a set period of time. I generally say if someone has not been in your salon for up to eight weeks, they need to be considered a brand new client. So, and one of the strategies that we teach on keeping people on a more regular basis is creating the first groom, a consultation groom. And so the consultation groom should be a certain time of the day, ideally the last dog of the day. That way you have time to really focus on that dog, talk to the owner, communicate with the owner, connect with the owner, make sure you guys are a good fit. Um, we really need to start interviewing the pets instead of letting them just kind of use and abuse us, right? We want to know it's like a date, like, hey, do I like you? Do we have the same values? Is this something I can commit to? These dogs are going to live 10, 15 years. Do I like you enough to see you every month for the next 15 years? I don't know yet. At least one consultation group, I have time to figure that out. Does this person have realistic expectations? Can I meet these expectations? Does this person need some support in learning how to brush their dog or not, right? I can take all of that time in doing it. Um, so it, it's really difficult, right? Because again, it's it creates that boundary. When you don't, it's kind of like somebody who hasn't seen you in six months thinks that they're a new, they're this, they're a current client. I'm a regular client. Well, what is a regular client? By creating a consultation groom, I've created that boundary, right? By saying things like, um, by saying if you haven't been in, in eight weeks, you're you have to do a consultation groom like every new client. Again, I'm setting a boundary. If you haven't been in eight weeks or a new client, that person goes, oh, shit, I better get on every eight weeks or less. I mean, you could do it for every six weeks and it suggests every four weeks, right? And if they go more than six, you're a brand new client. You have to reapply. You lose all of your booked appointments, whatever it is, right? And you have to start all over again. So that's basically what a consultation group is. So the question was, if an every four week doodle is 130 to 150, what would you charge for a consultation group? I'm going to be lazy and pull up my calculator because I can't do math in my head. So I generally suggest, and you do what you want, that you charge according to not just the time, care, and attention, not just the points, but also the amount of weeks. Because if there's no incentive for me to come in every four weeks, why would I come in every four weeks? If, again, so if it's, let's say for easy math, 150 for a four-week doodle groom. Well, that means that if you haven't come in eight weeks, it's going to be 300. Why? Because it's double. Why? Because it's been 100% of the time. You literally jumped double the time. Instead of having two grooms, you're going to have one groom. Now, some of you guys are going to be like, well, it takes the same amount of time. No, it doesn't. A dog done every four weeks um, is going to be better behaved. Their skin and coat is going to be better. The groom is going to be significantly easier especially if we have younger people that are new to the grooming industry, you know, they're going to take, we have to remember how many people we need to come into this industry. We need to start training a lot of people. And if everyone has been grooming, everyone I know basically has been grooming five years plus. I don't know many young groomers right now. Do you, how many people do you guys know that have been grooming less than five years and are definitely staying? Cause I don't know many. Like, I really don't. Um, most people I know are 5, 10, 15 years plus, and they're either slowing down or they can't find help. And that's why we've created classes. But so in this doodle example, I would have every four weeks be 150. Uh, I got to do my math because 300 divided by eight weeks 
means that it's going to be about 3750. So 3750 a week times 6 weeks. So it's 225. So that means that every 6 weeks, so if you come every 4 weeks it's 150, every 6 weeks it's 225, every 8 weeks it's 300. And then if you choose to wait 8 weeks plus, I would have them again at that 300 as a consultation group. Immediately I've added a ton of value. Immediately that person is sitting there going, so my first groom is 300, but then if I come every four weeks, it's half. And I go, yes. I've immediately made that 150 go from being really crazy high to very reasonable. Now, they might be like, I'm not paying 300 bucks. Well, then that also tells me that they're actually not committed to making an every four week commitment, right? Because if you're willing to invest 300 this one time, which people do all the time, by the way, with hairdressers, you know, all the time, your initial, if you're going blonde, your initial hair, your initial foil and setup is always going to be two or 300 bucks. And then it gets cheaper because you're doing partial foils, right? That's what happens. And it's in tons of different industries. You pay more up front for the first one. And then after that, it's cheaper. So again, by doing that and then me stating, it's going to probably be you know, depending upon if you want to have him groomed every four or six weeks, it's going to be either 150 or 225, right? They're going to go, oh, wow, I'm going to save half. It's going to be a much better deal. If they go, oh, well, I only want him done every eight weeks, be like, well, you can do every eight weeks, but it's going to continue to be the 300. They go, oh, what if it's over eight weeks? Well, then you would be a consultation groom and you're only allowed to have two a year, you know, and I highly suggest either having only one every calendar year or two every calendar year and say, listen, you're only allowed to do that. And after two consultation rooms, I would probably tell them, you know what, obviously, you know, we've had two consultation rooms. You have decided not to commit to us. I feel like this is probably not the best fit. And then you can just drop them. But again, it sets a boundary. So that's where I would highly suggest if you're having an every four week doodle client who's 150, have the consultation room, right, and do that. So um, someone said, nope, no one. If you want to let me know the context, I'm happy to answer whatever that is. I'm happy to be here with you guys, but that's the truth. And even then part of you guys is like, well, I don't, you know, who's the doodle owner who's going to pay the $300 consultation groom? Well, you know who they are? The, the person who's like, you know what? I really want this groomer. I really want to make a long-term commitment with this groomer. I know the first one's going to be expensive, but after that, it gets much more reasonable at 150, right? And I know that they're committed. I know that they're invested in this long-term relationship. There's too many of us that just are not willing to have people put their money where their mouth is. If they don't want to invest that money, let them go elsewhere. You know, the amount of money that we're charging for these doodles is generally not, it's not worth it. So again, if, and then they're not going to commit. They're going to be like, yeah, no problem. I'll definitely come. Every, if you charge the 150 for every four weeks, and like, yeah, you know, I definitely come every four weeks. They book for four weeks. And like, oh, actually, like we're going out of town and now it's six weeks. And again, if you have the example where I gave, it's four, I say, no problem. You can definitely do that. Just want to let you know it went from 150 to 225. Why? Because it's six weeks and you knew that ahead of time. Oh, okay. Yeah. But it's a lot easier if I do, and you know, and then it's eight weeks. Okay. It's no problem. It's 300 bucks. Right. You by creating those consequences, it stops people from making those kinds of choices. Um, so we have a user who's saying, I'm planning on changing my pricing policies. I'm trying to decide whether I buy into the Savvy Groomer member for a few months or purchase the price increase masterclass. Uh, could you explain the difference? So uh, let me actually pull this up. So just so you guys know, the master classes are, unless if they're being taught live in the membership, which there is always every quarter, every single quarter, there is a, sorry, I got to hit the new share button. Every single quarter, there is a new, actually, you should be able to see it here. So the price increase master class is a self-study six module class where we teach you all about how to price appropriately. We have everything that's in our modules. And there's two different ways to buy. One is to just buy the self-study by yourself for a thousand bucks. And 
you're a non-member, you get instant access to all six modules, all the different variations that we've recorded. I think we've done it at least four or five times at this point, the assignments. You do it whenever you want. You have access to this one. And if we ever update it, which we just did recently, um, or do a new recording, you will get access to any new recordings. And if you need a payment plan, we do have offerings for a payment plan. Now, members of the Savvy Groomer membership get 50% off of coaching calls and they get 50% off of our master classes. So you can buy the self-study and one month of the Savvy Groomer membership, which is also the group mentoring at 850. Because what you're doing is you're purchasing the self-study at 50% off at 500. And then you're getting one month of the group mentoring or the Savvy Groomer membership included. Now, if you don't want to pay for another month, you do need to cancel. But you can immediately buy it and then immediately cancel and save yourself 150 bucks and just come and hang out with us in group mentoring. Now, you get a month access to the business workshop library, which again is going to have things like your pricing and points workshop. It's going to have things about soulmate clients. It's going to have all of that information, which I think is incredibly useful. Um, and again, that month of the group mentoring that they're like, okay, well, I don't understand. And you will often hear us talk interchangeably about the Savvy Guru membership and group mentoring. And I'll tell you why. The Savvy Guru membership is the tree and group mentorship is one of the branches. So in the Savvy Groomer membership, what you get, and again, so you get access to the group mentorship, which is a weekly call at 10 a.m. Eastern. Um, and again, if you're not available on Monday, 10 a.m. Eastern, don't worry about it. You can always post questions in the group, just similar to this, and we're going to answer them just like this. You're going to have your questions actually be able to answer. Um, and you're going to have a library of calls. We literally have at this point, I think it's like 60 or 70 hours of calls. And because each question is, is written in, you can actually use search and ask similar questions that are asked in depth. Um, and again, you're going to appear in community support. We have a great community of other like-minded groomers. You can ask the question. You're going to have answers from them. Uh, in the Savvy Groomer membership, which again is part of the group mentorship, you're going to have access to our business workshop library. Now that is either 50 bucks a month or 200 bucks a year. So you're going to save that money. We're also going to do live monthly workshops that are live and you get access through them through the end of the quarter. Um, and we always do one quarterly masterclass. Okay. You also get discounts. You get discounts on any self-study course. If you want to buy one month of the Savvy Guru membership and buy all of our masterclasses 50% off and cancel, that's fine. Whatever it is you want to do. If you want to go ahead and book, you know, uh, for coaching calls at 50% off while you're a member, you can absolutely do that. So there's so many things in the membership. Um, this quarter in quarter two, we just taught pricing and points. So that recording will be in the Savvy Groomer membership student portal. We're going to be starting next week teaching the employee pay masterclass. We're going to teach you all about how to pay employees hourly and legally in the United States. And then we're going to be teaching a brand new workshop called Commission to Hourly. So either how to transition you from Commission to Hourly or to teach you how to prepare yourself to transition your employees from Commission to Hourly. Um, and again, you can always buy these things individually or you can get them for free in the group mentoring. It's totally up to you. So if you're not really sure which one to buy, my answer is always even if you were thinking about just buying this class, the self-study, it's still better to buy it with the membership. You're no matter what, you're going to be saving the money. You know, I would much rather have you guys buy the self-study, make some money and spend a month in the group. And again, if you don't want to be here more than a month in the group mentorship, which is the membership, then sign up, save the 150 bucks and cancel it right away. And then come hang out in the Facebook group for the entire month, enjoy all the benefits and do the self-study as needed. You know, I would rather you guys do that and have the support than invest in the self-study and just get the self-study. Um, 
I really think that's the best way to do everything. And again, if you're loving the group mentoring, great. If you're not, that's okay too. It's all about what you need. Um, and as far as like the policies and everything, again, it's great to go through the self-study. And again, you have it for a month. You have the membership for a month, hop in group mentoring for a month. If you can sit down and focus and bang out the self-study of one of these master classes and ask all the questions you want to ask. And, you know, for those of you guys that haven't seen the coaching, right? So again, our coaching, our one-on-one -on -one coaching calls, our members get 50% off and they have access to after hours or emergency calls, you know? So our members only pay 200 bucks an hour. Our non-members pay 400. So not only do you save 150 bucks on the masterclass, but you can put that towards a one hour private coaching call. Totally fine, right? Uh, for those of you guys that want to do a four hour VIP day, you know, even if you weren't going to, uh, purchase a masterclass, being in group mentoring slash the Savvy Guru membership. If you're going to do a four hour VIP day where you want to sit down for four hours and we can really get through the nitty gritty of everything that you need to, it, you're still going to save the money. You're going to save more money being a member and then booking a VIP day because you're going to save $800. You're going to save 50%. So I can't stress enough how much of a better deal being a member is. We really want to see it, right? You know, and also the Savvy Groomer members have more options for coaching. They have a three, they have a 30 minute, a one hour, a two hour and a VIP day. And then I do have Saturday and Sunday uh, hours available for members only. Um, and then the after hours emergency calls, they can be up to three hours in advance. So, you know, if it's something where you need someone and you need to talk to somebody within like the same day or the next day, most of the time, not always. But most of the time we have emergency and, and again, the members will message me and say, hey, I'm having this really hard time. I'm having this problem. Do you have any after hours available today? I can say, OK, let me pop them open, you know, go through my calendar and we can figure it out. But again, that's only offered to Savvy Groomer members. So it's definitely a thing. Um, I have a student who says, I'm up in Canada, so the exchange makes the monthly cost in, uh, inhibitive. I'd love to be forever member, but 475, 500 a month is tight. Listen, I get it. Right now, I'm really lucky because my money goes so much further for Australia and the UK. I don't know what's going to happen with the US dollar. I don't know if it's going to like totally shift what's going to happen, but I totally get it. You know, and it's not always cost effective for everyone. Um, you know, it might. But again, even buying the master classes, um, you know, and that's and that is always the hard part. Right. I know, uh, God, a couple of years ago when the euro was like really, really high, I was purchasing a real I have a. So I have a few business coaches and I had two at the time I had one in the UK and then I had one in Switzerland, and now I have one in Greece, and I have another one who's oh, actually I still have one in Switzerland. Um, and it's so interesting because when I had my UK person, I was like, okay, this isn't terrible. And then for Greece, I was like, ugh, like this was a terrible exchange rate. I was really not doing well. I'm like, this is really high. Um, and it is. It's one of those things that you have to make a choice, right? You have to decide, okay, is this actually going to make me my money back? And I want to be a good ROI, but sometimes I might not be, guys. This is what's important. You need to figure out if you're going to, with the weekly accountability, and hold yourself accountable, right? It might be make more financial sense to have a one-on-one -on -one coaching. It might make sense to do more self-study. The biggest thing for us is that we just want to make sure that you get the help. We have hundreds of hours for free on YouTube. We have the Greedy Bitch Podcast. Again, free. We do a monthly virtual happy hour. And if you want to go ahead and buy the masterclass, save a little money, right? Like I said, and my cat is being a really naughty little critter. You know, and this is the pay masterclass, right? You can either come and watch it in the business, uh, in the membership, or like I said, you know, save 150 bucks. I know that'll differentiate between, you know, American and Canadian dollars. 
or if you guys are in Australia, you know, but even then, even if you buy it one time and cancel it for a month, enjoy it for a month, you're still saving 150 bucks USD. And again, I think that's it. And if you're, if it's not the right place, right time, I'm here for you anyway. You guys don't have to buy my stuff for me to, to be here. Like I will be here every month doing a virtual happy hour for free, answering your questions, right? Supporting you guys the best we can. And yeah, you know, that's, that's what we can do. Look at this crazy soul. He stole my hair tie. And now he's hunting it. Look guys, thank you guys so much for being here. And I really appreciate it. I just want to remind you guys that you know, whether you're ready to purchase something from the Savvy Groomer or you're on the journey making extra money, my goal is that when you see, you know, and again, I'm so sorry, I can't see your name. Uh, my goal is when you see that $475 a month, it doesn't even phase you. You're like, no big deal, just a drop in the bucket, right? And you guys can get there. You know, I have so many students that, well, let me put it this way. You know, I remember when a thousand dollars was a lot of money, you know, um, and it sounds like a really terrible thing for me to say, but, you know, I used to spend $20 a month in food, right? And I pay, I, you know, I'm a debt free person. The business has grown. We invest really wisely in different things and different tactics um, and better products. I mean, we just invested a lot of money in updating a lot of our master classes. Um, I paid a lot of money for a curriculum strategist who also works primarily with neurodivergent um, people and making sure that it is both calming. Um, it was very tough because it was like, can we please make it better for people who are autistic, but also um, interesting enough for those that are, you know, ADD. Can we figure that out? Um, and it's not going to make people that have OCD have a conniption fit. Can we do that, please? Um, and I'm really grateful to invest that kind of money, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to make it better, right? And that's what we're going to do. And my goal is, you know, why, I have hundreds of hours for free on YouTube. Watch the free stuff. Get better. Get to a point where you're like, you know what? I can totally make that happen. It's not a problem. And if you're not there yet, there's no shame in that. There's no shame in that. And it's okay to say too, you know what? As much as I love that river, I don't value that service enough. I really enjoy your master classes. I really enjoy the workshop library, but I don't value the, that in that way. That's okay too. Nobody has to like everything you do. And once you get in a place in that in your business and you have this amazing piece, you guys are going to be so happy that you get to that place. Speaking of. See that crazy thing? Being a silly cat. Well, guys, I really appreciate you guys being here. Um, we're a little bit over time, so I'm going to go ahead and button up and finish this. Thank you so much for being here. Again, if you guys are interested, we are starting the pay masterclass next Tuesday in the Savvy Groomer membership. We'd love to have you guys there. I really love seeing you guys. Um you know, it's really, it's a really fun group. And then I get to just like deep dive. I get to know you guys better. So when I'm giving you answers, I can give the group an answer, but I can also give you some great nuggets for you individually. Oh, I'm so excited. Someone says they're going to sign up. Yay. We'd love to have you. You know, again, when you guys are ready for that kind of level of commitment, and it is a commitment. I mean, it's a month to month commitment, but it's still, it's, it's a financial investment when you're ready to invest that kind of money. You know, and again, my goal is for you guys to charge doodles enough that this money is no big deal. But again, if you are interested, the pay masterclass, like I said, we're going to be starting this uh, next Tuesday in the Savvy Groomer membership. If you're interested in joining, I highly suggest you buy the better version, which is a self-studying group mentoring. That's where you're going to get the live new version. If you just want to watch the recording, that is going to be the self-study and the non-member and you guys who buy the self-study, you will not be coming to the live with the Q&A, but you will get the recordings after we finish it. So I'm really excited to see you guys there. And as always, guys, you know, I appreciate you. So take it easy. And as always, guys, happy grooming. <laughs>